Ladies and gentlemen, this news conference is about the status of trash collections and other news topics. You're about to hear from Mayor Richard Thomas on all these effects. And for those that have phones, let's put them on silent. <laughs> um, there's a lot going on in Mount Vernon, and right now we know that trash collection has been impacted by five major things that have really set this department and city back. You're gonna hear from a moment from Commissioner Mark Ederer, who's gonna provide a step-by-step -step, uh, detail on where we are with trash collection, but as well as the efforts that have been undertaken to make sure we get trucks in from all over this country to help us pick up the trash. I wanna restate that I've been talking with various vendors over the past 48 hours, reopening lines of credit that have been shut, and we are thankful for their help and their support to help us get our trucks back on the road. But this is an emergency situation that we are working ourselves through. Separate from all of this, but still connected, was a discussion I had earlier today with uh, State Supreme Court Judge Gerald Lohr. We were talking about Memorial Field. We were talking about city finances. And present in the meeting were attorneys and uh, one of the council members, the council president. And what I can assure you is, we left the table with an understanding that stuff will get done. Action will be taken. And I will resubmit all the paperwork that has been resubmitted over the many months and years to make sure that this department and this city is properly funded so we can protect and serve the people of Mount Vernon. So for now, I just wanna talk about a few things that all connect to this trash problem that we have in the city. The first thing is, there's an active conspiracy going on. This morning, Jay Guac from the New York State Comptroller and Ethics Office said that the powers to be called him and pulled him from his audit of the controller. What's that about? He nervously said it was an emergency and they shut down the audit. When asked if it was all audits across the state, he said no, just shutting down Mount Vernon's audit. That's wrong. Second, there are employees here that have responded to and will respond again to the false information, the blatant lies that were shared yesterday by the controller. Number three, we know that the school children of our city are victims of the controller's arrogance and blatant obstruction. When you ask the controller where's the school district's $20 million and why she has not followed the law and sent it to them, you have to ask where's the monthly report? Where's the information? Where are the facts? And all of you are investigative journalists, and I'm, and I'm hoping that we follow up with her to provide more than just the mayor said, the mayor said. We have nothing but truth and facts to back up everything that was said, and you can see the consequences of bills not being paid. Vendors decide to cut you off, especially after a year of not being paid. We know that the city council's 2019 budget is a farce, and we have to ask, how is it possible for the controller one day to say, in connection with the mayor's budget that there's plenty of money. Then, two weeks later, she ran out of money, and then the city's running out of money. What are we supposed to believe? Where are the facts? We know that we've done a lot despite all of the moving goalposts with working with the controller and the council. We know that we're working on free public Wi-Fi, job training, livable spaces. You see many buildings being built in this city, you see a lot of jobs coming to Mount Vernon. Just bus companies alone, 600 employees new th that were just added. But when it comes to supporting the men and women that work for the city of Mount Vernon, we get the runaround. And that's why I'm gonna continue to bring 
people together to identify real solutions to make sure that we solve this problem. The good thing is help is on the way. There are new trucks that were ordered under an emergency basis to be rented until further notice. They need time to get here, but they also need to be paid. So in working with State Supreme Court Justice Lohr, Judge Kakase, I fully expect the controller to process these payments, and if she doesn't, I'm gonna find another way to make sure that that bill gets paid. We are not gonna let the people of Mount Vernon continue to suffer. We're gonna to continue to fight and fight more aggressively to defend our homes and our way of life. With that, I'm gonna bring up Commissioner Mark Ederer, who is a commissioner of Department of Public Works, and I wanna again say thank you to the men and women of DPW for going the distance to muscle up and power through this situation. Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yesterday we didn't have any trucks up. We, we, we managed to get one up last night. So we've got one truck out collecting south side garbage now. We have a second, which I understand is about to go out. Uh, we, thanks to the mayors reaching out to uh, Freightliner, Mac, and some of the other vendors, they have agreed to, at least for the short term, supply us parts. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some of the parts we needed weren't in stock, so it's gonna take a little longer to get them. We hope to get two more trucks up tomorrow. Uh, we're working to get the routes done. We should get south side done today, the best we can, at least the, at least the, uh, the garbage part of it, and tomorrow we're gonna try and do north side. With that, I'm gonna um, invite um, Pat Rosamunda to come up and talk about uh, some of her experiences um, that she has had and some of the challenges that um, are being faced. Pat? Thank you, Mayor Thomas. Um, back in 2018, we are mandated, I'm New York State Civil Service, we are mandated by a federal Vulcan decree to hold a firefighter or a uniform service test every four years. We accomplished that feat in uh, April of last year. However, we needed additional funding to pay the people that have so loyally worked for us. Uh, we requested the money from the controller's office. She has not yet um, met our request and I have 26 people that have worked September, October, and November that have not been paid the appropriate salary. They haven't been paid a penny to work these tests for us. This year, we are mandated to do the police officer test. Same thing, we requested the money, have not been allocated the appropriate funds, and we once again are in the dilemma of looking to legislate the money and get the money that we so appropriately need. It's been a lack of cooperation and we come in every day and do our best to go to the city council as well as go to the controller, but our cries fall on deaf ears. Thank you. So for those out there that are wondering what's going on, I just want to give a quick, I guess, civics lesson. The way Mount Vernon's government is structured is like a three-legged stool. There's a branch that's the mayor's office, there's the controller's office, which is elected, there's the city council, also elected. And if any one of those branches or legs of the stool gives way, everything stops. And what you're seeing is a coordinated conspiracy to stop anything and everything that tries to help this city get better. The council is not putting the controller in check, they have a charter mandate to make sure she gets insurance. The school district put us on notice that $20 million is short for our school children. There are some other liabilities that you see with respect to civil service, state and federally mandated. If one or the other, and they're both acting in concert, it is very clear, we get this paralysis, this obstruction. And that's why we are taking every single step to make sure we bring the fight to where it belongs. 
and we need people to step in and step up, not do what happened today with the controller's office and step out. We need help. The facts are clear. You have people that have no dog in this fight right here standing with us saying, hey, we got to get this right for the people of Mount Vernon. It's wrong. That police officer hiring is going to be impacted. Firefighter hiring is going to be impacted. Snow removal and trash removal is currently at a standstill. That's not where we should be. We should be somewhere way better than this. And that's why I'm going to continue to fight the obstructionists that are tying everybody's hands. That's my job. So I'm going to continue to reach out to the public, the people of Mount Vernon, to step up and say no more to these blockheads. With that, we'll take questions. When will the recycling be picked up? Commissioner? Next, next Wednesday. Next Recycling Wednesday. will resume next week. Yesterday you said there was four trucks working. I heard there's one truck working now and one truck going out. So is there four trucks working or two trucks working? We have two trucks working right now. Two. We expected to have four. We only had two. Lastly, uh, the mayor said there's new trucks that are being rented and they're on the way. When will they get here? And where are they from? And how much are they? They're coming from Cleveland. The uh, cost is approximately $2,300 per truck per week. We've ordered six of them. We expect them Monday or Tuesday. Thank you. Mayor, the city promised that there would be garbage collection today. There was a couple of residents on North High Street and Oak Street in that area of Mount Vernon today. Their garbage was still on their streets as of this afternoon. Is that garbage going to be picked up? Well, I'm going to ask Edgar to explain the conditions of the trucks that are down and why they're down. And I'm gonna ask Edgar, our supervising mechanic, to explain why only one truck is available at this point in time. Edgar. Thank you. Last night, we stood here to get at least two trucks up, which we did get the two trucks up. However, because of the incident that happened with the truck with Wild, the men, they were diligent in checking the trucks over, so they were finding other things wrong with the trucks. And according to DOT, they were allowed to, to write it up and put the truck down. So because of that, those two trucks turned into one. Then more issues started popping up, because what happens when you fix one, something else pops up. So as I even had men come in at four in the morning, we're doing everything possible to get everything up and one is going to turn into two, two is going to turn into three. So we're doing everything possible. Um, I thank the mayor for helping us with the vendors. However, exactly what the commissioner said, none of the parts were in stock. However, we were doing everything that we can, and that's, that's what I have for now. Can you just describe some of the parts that are not in stock? Some of the parts that are not in stock is, for example, a $3,200 radiator. They don't keep that in stock, that has to be ordered. We need valves for, oh, for um, the truck is, is a 2010. So because of the truck being so old, they don't keep these things in stock. So, and we have another truck that needs uh, a hydraulic valve that's coming in next Tuesday. You gotta remember, with these trucks, they don't keep nothing in stock. So these things are special order. And because I couldn't get parts, the city couldn't get parts, excuse me, that um, I had to wait to order because I could not order, and once I got the green light to order, everything is right now on hold, and all we're waiting for is the drop-off. And once it's drop-off, me and my men are gonna go hard on these trucks. We're gonna work 24 hours, if we have to, to make sure these trucks are up, to help the city do what needs to be done. So should residents just leave the garbage on the curb for it to be picked up today, or should they be taking that back inside? North High Street and Oak Street are on the north side. So they weren't scheduled for pickup today. We, we're, we're doing south side garbage today. What we're attempting to do with two trucks and working them late and working them overtime is get the garbage, not the heavy bulk rubbish items which go out on the second garbage day, like sofas and things like that. Tomorrow, whatever's not picked up today, we'll try and get tomorrow. We're behind, we're using, the men are doing everything they can. We're sending out small trucks, dump trucks, and they're throwing garbage in the back of some of these dump trucks. 
to, just to try and try and try and get it picked up. We're working a second shift. We're going to work two shifts to, tomorrow. So the recycle, we asked that people would take the recycle back in the cardboard that's out on the north side uh, or, or throughout the city. That that may be the garbage that that these people are talking about. It's it's cardboard, but. Uh, Trash pickup on the north side tomorrow. Got two trucks, hopefully get two more back up tomorrow, and we'll do double them up, double up the shifts, and try and get it all done. Now, if, uh, if the control is not paying for the bills, how do you expect to pay for these trucks that you just rented? That's a potential issue. They, they, that is a potential issue. They, they, they're sending us the trucks. We're gonna get them Monday. We need them. So how they're going to get paid for, and we're, hope, we're hoping that the city council will come through with, with the appropriate legislation and the controller will do the right thing. So what can you guys say to the residents? I spoke to you today that say they, the DPW is always on point. They're always doing the right thing. But now they're seeing recycling blown all over the streets, and they just want a fix. What do you say to their frustration? We're going to fix it. And we need your help to fight back and tell these blockheads to stop blocking the progress of Mount Vernon. Get on board with building up our city and stop tearing it down. So here goes the he said, she said. I know. And, and this is why I'm, I'm, I'm going to issue the challenge right back. She can say whatever she wants, but she doesn't present one fact. There's nothing behind her words. And I have people here from foreman to the New York State Civil Service Commission stating factually that she's done everything to comply with every process according to state and city law and she's been blocked and obstructed by the controller. That story is very much the same for DPW. Every time, and, and again, there's a video that was played right here, right now. I invite you to please, let's take a quick 30 seconds to play the video, play the tape. Because no matter how many times you bring it down, she says no. Yeah, let's take a quick look, please. This is the answer. No matter what you do, no matter how many times she changes the rules, we do our best, or excuse me, not the rules, she changes her preference. We do our best to comply. And I have commissioners who sued us as a city in federal court because the controller refuses to process their paperwork as the commissioner. I have a lawsuit right here on the, on the, on the day. I have it. I'll give it to you. You can read how she just rejects people. I have Nina uh, Crispino, who's standing right behind you, Allie. She's the Commissioner of Human Resources. And Comptroller Reynolds will not talk to her, won't acknowledge her, won't accept any papers, won't process her paperwork to be the Commissioner of Human Resources. I have a court order from Judge Lefkowitz saying that it is illegal for her to do that. But these are the things that are happening to stop me from serving the people of Mount Vernon. It's hard to believe, but that's what's happening. That's why we're here today. This did not happen yesterday. It happened when I became mayor. They stopped and blocked anything and everything. And that's what this is about. But we're going to keep fighting them to make sure we protect the people of Mount Vernon. So, Mayor, you were voted in by the people, and so were they. How you fix this mess? Look, the people are watching very carefully and very closely. And what the people are seeing are 
There are people that are blatantly lying, and there are people that have nothing but facts. And I think the facts will help people figure out you know, who's working on their behalf and who's working against them. What I can tell you is in each court order that I've obtained, we have won. The people in Mount Vernon have won. They were signing checks behind my back, stop that. They were trying to unappoint and not recognize people for their positions, stop that. The courts have consistently and repeatedly sided with the mayor. But for some reason, she can say, you know, they didn't walk into my office, my office backwards today, that's why I didn't accept the papers. And then all of a sudden, we're back at square one trying to figure out how to get the bill paid. But that's why I'm going to continue to insist control of the Napoli meet with me, my administration, the governor take a hard look at what's going on. We put this on his desk back in September of 2018. What's the holdup? There are clear problems here. And let's just bring up Memorial Field very quickly. Illegal dumping happened there. Nothing happened to anybody. That goes to show you the signal of powers that be. They don't care about us, but I do. And that's why I'm gonna keep bringing the fight to them. Because this is what's right. Right is right. And what they're doing to Mount Vernon is wrong. And I'm not gonna stand for it. Any more questions? Well look, there are a bunch of employees around here. Nina Crispino is here if you wanna to talk to her. Um, Pat Rosamunda from Civil Service is here if you want to talk to her. We have the, the news article about the school district's tax money being held up. We have bills and mountains of bills. And we have everything you need. And the only question we have is where's the governor where's the controller of the state of New York? Where are they? I know I'm going to keep fighting to get these trucks here, the sanitation trucks here. And I want to thank the Teamsters. I want to thank New York City. I want to thank Yonkers. I want to thank all the municipalities that have reached out behind the scenes and say, we're going to do our best to help you out. We're going to fix this, but the fight, it ain't over. It's going to get bigger, stronger, and harder by the men of this department and the people of the city against all of the obstructionists. God bless.